I'd like to call the special meeting of January 24, 2019. Um. Roll call. Mayor Cranjack is absent. Councilpersons Wu. Here. Song is not here yet. Savari. Here. Park. Here. Aversa. Here. O. Here. Our attorney. You. Labor attorney. Here. And municipal clerk. Everyone's here except uh, Mayor Cranjack <coughs> and Councilman Song. Is he calling in? I wasn't given that information. Please rise to uh, flex a little. I'm going to ask Councilman Wu to lead us to flex. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May be seated. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, would you uh, read the Open Public Meetings Act statement, please? Adequate notice of this meeting was given to the press and posted as required. Date and time of this meeting was legally given as required by the Open Public Meetings Act. This notice is on file with the municipal clerk and posted on the bulletin board. Minutes of this meeting will be made available to the public upon the completion of typing and proofreading by the municipal clerk. Thank you. Do I have a motion uh, to open to the public? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Does anyone uh, from the audience like to come up and uh, make comments? The Donna Smart Festus, 26 Johnson <laughs> Angle Eclipse, New Jersey. Good evening. I'd like to wish you people all the best. And I hope all the decisions you, you do make, with God's help, will be the right decisions. You know, I tried to study the, as best as I could, the plan that, that they proposed for the housing for the borough of Angle Eclipse. I hope you people studied it enough to where a fine judgment, you can put it aside and maybe make an order to show cause and go in front of the judge and ask the judge to give you 120, 160 days to put up a plan that works. Even though some of my friends were on that and tried their best, I believe, to make the plan, I don't think that plan flies. I think it's flawed. And I don't think it's good for the cliffs. And I just hope that the rest of the stuff that you guys are going to work on tonight, with God's help, is the right move. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else who would like to speak? Oh, excuse me. And by the way, yeah. I'm the one who said that I think that we're going to win at 800. Of course, it's not going to win. Of course, it's not going to win. Good. Lauren Eastwood, Four Willow Drive. Uh, first of all, I would like to address conflicts of interest. Um, there are a number of issues on the closed session agenda tonight in which, close, in which conflicts of interest seem to be a problem, including your current borough attorneys. Um, I have a pile of documents downloaded from PACER and New Jersey eCourt Civil Access. Um, in which he appears to be representing borough police officers, including one letter in which he uh, writes to a court saying he wants to join his, his client, Captain Murphy, is thinking of joining the lawsuit that Chief Chalky's filed, or filing a similar one. Um, and I expect everyone on this council and every borough employee to adhere strictly to the rules on conflicts of interest. Um, Second, and I will remind everyone um, of uh, Judge Farrington's admonition in my lawsuit about um, 
that sometimes the only remedy is malfeasance in office. And I uh, would caution all of you to think very carefully about your conflicts and your duties to this borough. Second of all, I read on PACER yesterday uh, that you're settling Chief Chaffee's lawsuit. I hope that we are not going to be paying hundreds of thousands of dollars to someone who is on tape making disparaging statements about residents, making sexist statements, making racist statements. Um, in any other town, an employee doing that would be fired. And I sincerely hope that you're not going to be rewarding political loyalty and looking the other way at racism and sexism. Um, can I interrupt for one second? Um, I think the mayor was going to call in to the meeting tonight. So, um, was that, do you have his number? No. Give him a call. It's on his cell phone. Let's see. There you go. 201? Um, okay. Yeah. Do that loud. Oh, anyone else? Go ahead, sir. For the record, can you see your name and address? Yes, uh, my name is Lee, uh, 102 Person Road. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I know your councilman and councilwoman uh, are elected by the people, and hopefully you do the the new decision for the interest of the people of this town. And I really uh, want to uh, ask you to do the right thing for the people who lives here, not who is the Republican, not who is the Democrat. And really, I will hate it to see our town doing things for the sake of or because it's, right. our, it's our team or our side rather than that really if you can then make the best decision for save the money for the town and whatever is for the town for the people of the town because you are bought by the people of the town maybe people they don't know what's really going on in the back they can vote but the, the truth will come out later on and then there will be no second time so what I'd like to ask you really do the thing for the good of the town and for the people. Thank you. Thank you. I will do it. Don't threaten me. Don't. I'm in the public can hear you. Don't threaten me. Thank you. The Mayor Krantrak is on the phone. I, I, mean, I was supposed to be talking to him, but I thought I not do so. Just so everybody knows that this meeting was supposed to be arranged when I was available. I specifically phoned. I was not available tonight, but they had it tonight. I did not approve the agenda. I did not approve the agenda. I did not approve any of the panel of the If the Democrats want to give Chaffee $10 million, put that on them. Okay, Mayor, you're out of order. You have to wait for your right. turn. Anyone else from the audience would like to speak? Go ahead, Mayor. All right, um, Mary O'Shea, 12 Irving Avenue. Um, uh, Mr. Wunsch, uh, will the tapes be released tomorrow as you promised? Yes. Yes, okay, all right. So then uh, the Oprah requests that are pending will be filled and they will be, can be picked up or? No, they're gonna be available on a, what's it called? A drop box? A drop box that you can get the code on or whatever you have to do. Believe me, I don't have any technological expertise whatsoever. I just okay. learned how to do like redial yesterday. So I'm just telling you that there is this Dropbox thing yeah, right. that will be accessed there. And if I know how to use that, and I'm it, a lot older than you. It, <laughs> well, yeah, and God bless you, because I mean, I'm, I'm, but I'm not as smart as you. No, so you're not. Know but um, the uh, if and you got about 50 hours of your time of your life that you okay. want to spend. Okay, so then uh, the clerk, means. the clerk will send the link to me 
to fill the Oprah request tomorrow. I don't know if that was going to go on the website and that you just go to the website to get the link. I'm not sure how that's going to be done. Um, I haven't spoken to IT. So, I mean, we just have to be available be tomorrow. instructions tomorrow. Before the end of business tomorrow, it will be up and running. I have spent numerous hours going through everything and putting it together, and it has been sent to the attorneys that have to get it pursuant to Judge Farrington's order, and it will be available to the public <clears throat> tomorrow. Okay, very good. And um, the council people that uh, will be deliberating on some of the items on tonight's agenda, have you listened to the tapes, Ellen Park? I've listened to some of the tapes, but Anne-Marie, I met with her three times, couldn't get the tape to work. Um, so you didn't hear them? I listened to some of it. Okay. Wherever she played me, it wasn't all 80 hours or 50 tapes, but she definitely, yeah, played the, the snippets. The highlights? Whatever, yeah, that she played for me. Okay. Councilman Aversa? I got a chance to listen to them. Pardon me? I got a chance to listen to them. You did? Okay. It'd be good if you spoke into the microphone and sat closer so that your voice would get picked up. Okay. okay. I'm hard of hearing, and you sit, like, against the wall. And it doesn't go into the mic, okay? So I appreciate it. Okay, um, Debbie Savari, have you listened to the tapes yet? Yes, I have. You have. And Councilman Song? Yes, I have. Okay, Councilman Wu, yes. you did. Okay, all right. You didn't ask me. Oh, I didn't. I, I forget also. you're up there in the middle. I okay. have also. You have also. Okay, that, that's, that's good. Okay. Um, I was very concerned with the letter that was um, sent to the court from Mark Forrest and Associates, um, directed to Michael Hammer, um, District of New Jersey, the federal building in Newark, Reed Chaffee versus Inglewood Cliffs, 16 CV 4536. Dear Judge Hammer, I represent the plaintiff in this matter. This is to inform the court that the instant action is in the process of being resolved as part of a global resolution of this matter and other administrative matters between Plaintiff Chiaffi and the Borough of Englewood Cliffs. This resolution is subject to the approval of the Borough Council, which is scheduled to consider the matter tomorrow evening, January 24, 2019. Resolution of this matter is also subject to an entry of final agreement and release which is being negotiated. Given that this matter is being resolved, subject to the council approval and entry of a release as set forth above, I respectfully request an entry of a 60-day order dismissing the matter without prejudice. Thank you for your honor's continued attention. I was appalled when I read this, and I want to know when this council discussed releasing a global release against Chiaffi. It was never on an agenda that was in public. It was never listed as a caucus issue that I'm aware of, according to the items. And I want to know who made that decision. Did you make that decision, Gloria? Um, not as an individual. I can, I can you answer want a question. Well, At I, least the, I, the, I, the, the Public I, Safety I, Committee, the Public Safety Committee met. Right. Okay to deal with police issues, which okay. is what they're supposed to do. Okay, At I that understand point in that. Time, with the assistance of Mr. Ruderman, who is the, uh, the labor council of the town, there were, we were approached with an opportunity to try to settle a global settlement across the board. It was considered, it was discussed, and by it who? was by the police committee. Just the police committee, okay. Correct. And then at that point in time, okay, that's Mr. Right. Mayor, I was excluded. From I, I'm speaking, okay. Mayor. You know, I don't interrupt you. Please do no, not interrupt actually, me. Okay. Well, I, I can't see you. I, do, anyway, I am I was speaking. I have the floor, I was sir. I have if the floor. The Democrats on council. I have want the, to the floor, this sir. Mayor, the board million dollars. I have the floor. It was done through the police committee, as would have been by custom. Well, I'm an ex official member of that committee, and nobody notified me. All right, so check the Robert's rules, Council. Well, don't don't you feel don't you feel that something of this magnitude should have been brought to the public and brought to the council as a whole? It's a personnel matter. Why would that go? No, because it because because it's major lawsuits. We've been involved in lawsuits for three years. Right. That's absolutely with the right. And, and the time has come to to 
get rid of these these albatrosses that are upon us. Right, by shooting the town? Not right, shooting the what? town by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. You know what? I don't think we're going to go back and forth. Well, uh, all right. Well, I, well, yeah, I was asking the question, and he gave an answer that wasn't satisfactory. Well, that's one of the uh, topics that we're going to be going into right. the clues. Okay. Well, well, that the, 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 the council may not agree with Okay. Well, I would, I would caution the council, okay, against agreeing to this because uh, Chief Chiaffi has a contract with the town that says if he is sued, he gets all his legal fees paid. If you give him a pass for all his wrongdoings, the town could be liable for all his legal fees. And he's had a number of attorneys over the past three years and extensive legal work. And besides that, you're going to end up rewarding him for all his bad behavior. And I think it's outrageous, outrageous, that you would even consider doing so when he had, if, and you listened to the tapes, you heard him wish that he could kill a sitting council person. You heard him um, make jokes out of an Asian council person. You heard him talk about sexual innuendo of, with a council person. Okay, you know, and, and the other police officers that have grievances were in the room, Regan, Hinkleman, Murphy, okay, and none of them were reported, none of this was reported to the administrator, who at the time was Lizette, Clark, Lizette Duffy, unless, unless it, if it was reported, it was not made known, I don't know. But it should have been reported. They're all officers, senior officers, and they should have reported those situations. They should not have turned a blind eye, especially when they get up and put their pictures in the paper. They want to be stigma-free when they're the ones that are casting the stigma on people. It's a disgrace. And, and if you, any of you, support this action of alleviating his charges, you will also be involved. You will also be complicit in his actions. And I have to say, Gloria, you're sitting in, the, in, the, in there as acting as the mayor tonight, because the mayor is not here. If you proceed with this tonight, you will not win an election next year as mayor, although you have told everybody you're running. I don't think the people of this town will want somebody that condones those types of actions. It's just it's something for you to keep in mind. Um, And I'd like to know, you know, I'm only off the council two weeks since January 3rd. So you've really been moving forward on this at an at a, um, accelerated rate to get this done by tonight. Okay, and I would like to know um, have you been discussing it outside of the council? Have you been communicating with each other in violation of the Open Public Meetings Act, telephone conferences, email conferences. Should we request all your emails like Ellen Park requested emails? Should we request all of your emails to see if you had communicated back and forth with each other on this topic? Mary, this is not a question and answer session. So my question is, uh, have you, you know, communicated we your comments? Um, uh, we appreciate your comments, but this is not a question and answer. All right. Well, I have, so other people have always asked have questions. Else to say, you always you, up and ask you may say questions. it, but I like to open it to other people. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep moving ahead. Okay. Um, just wanted to say that if the other thing is for the attorney for the town to act on this these items it would have to be directed from the council and I remember many times it was said that nobody can give direction to the attorney to proceed with something not a committee it has to come back to the council the committee reports to the council and the council makes a decision if they want to proceed what you have happened here according to what's been said is that the police committee discussed this, came up with this um, supposedly, and the attorney acted upon it. The attorney had no business acting upon it without direction from the whole mayor and council. Okay, so that was an error. That should not have happened. 
okay? Um, now, I also noticed that you've been putting off every, every council meeting um, the two resolutions regarding the affordable housing plan. And um, I just want to remind you that Councilman O, Councilman Aversa, and Councilman Park all voted to acquire the property, the Dow property on Clendenning Place um, with the COA funds and to bond if necessary for the affordable housing complex that was agreed upon in concept. And I don't understand what changed in the past two weeks that you cannot vote on that, those two ordinances or resolutions that have been kicked back every meeting to the next meeting. And I thought tonight was originally scheduled to be a public hearing on the, those plans for the public. And, and it apparently did not happen. And um, I have another issue with the public notice. Um, the public notice on the New Jersey uh, public notices website for this meeting was only up tonight. It was not there before. Now, I don't know when the clerk sent it into the record. Um, but I, I know Monday was a holiday, but I would have thought that you would have had this uh, scheduled and planned out by Friday, that it would get in on time so that it would be up for the residents to be able to see it, because it's only on this site today. We were just waiting for the mayor. Oh, uh, the law states that the publication needs to be sent either by email, telegraph, or fax to the newspaper 48 hours prior to the meeting, and I complied with that law. It was sent 48 hours prior to this meeting. So when did it get sent? It was sent 48 hours ago. 48 hours ago. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Well... And just for the record, I was excluded from all that. The public safety committee, from the settlement discussions, from the agenda on this meeting, uh, I was intentionally excluded by the council, other than William Rue, the clerk, the administrator, and the county attorney. Uh, so my rights have been violated. You are all on notice. You can continue the meeting. Well, thank you, Mary. Mayor, next time, if you'd like to speak, you have to be recognized. Thank you. Um, can I just bring up a point? You know, this issue with the um, quote-unquote global settlement with the chief, um, when was the police committee notified? I, I haven't sat in a meeting where I was informed that the police committee would be talking together with the chief on this issue. This is the first time I'm hearing of that. No I, would, I would caution the discussion that we're going to be going in closed session on, and we'll discuss well, that. It's a pretty important I'm matter. Mayor, you're not recognized. Mayor, Mayor, you have to wait for your turn. Anyone else would like to speak? Go ahead. Uh, Andrew Nick out 54 Elm Street and uh, just my compliments to the council president for running this meeting um, so well um, uh, unfortunately we can all see what the common denominator is with the disruption uh, that has so famously graced our meetings and that would be the mayor and his despicable behavior up on the dais and I hope he hears me for that because I see the difference in a well-run meeting right now versus one that he officiates, which is utterly terrible. Um, and divisive, thank you, Tony. Um, my second comment is with regards to the COA litigation or the COA resolutions. I hope that uh, you do table these ordinances, uh, these resolutions for tonight. I do hope that the town will have a uh, chance to ask the attorneys and planners with regards to this. Me personally, I've reviewed these plans, what was submitted on the borough website, and I find them to be, for lack of a better term, awful. Um, surely there can be a better solution than this, and I hope that this council takes its time in evaluating something that was put together very poorly, in my opinion. Um, the last question I have is, 
with regards to, uh, I see that people have talked about the global settlements or whatever it is. I would just like to know, does anybody remember what the amount of litigation, how much of our budget we spent on litigation last year? I know I was I know there was a number thrown around of $1.8 million. $1.8. I'm just curious as to, you know, these lawsuits, you know, I've never luckily been involved in a lawsuit. Um, that may change, I don't know, but, you know, any, anything's possible these days. But I'd just like to know where the reluctance is to resolve these things. Um, speaking as a taxpayer, um, you know, I'd like to know at what point do we just continue these fights that seemingly go on and on forever in court. You know, as far as I know, if we don't sell this choppy thing at some point, it may still be going on by the time I'm dead and buried. You know, I, I think that that's, you know, it, it, it's more motivated right now uh, by seemingly a personal revenge or vendetta or whatever against the man. Look, he did a lot of wrong stuff. I'm not defending him. But at the same time, are we going to continue this or are we going to act like responsible government officials and do what's in the interest of the taxpayer? Yes, it may suck that you know, you're know you going to do something that's unpleasant, but at the same time, if we're going to continue to bleed money on lawyers, no offense, Al, um, you I'm know, taken. as a taxpayer, I'm pretty ticked off about that. I'm a taxpayer too. All right, and I, I don't want to see my taxpayer money going to lawsuits that seemingly have no end. Like I said, I'm not defending the man. I don't like what he did. I'm appalled by it, but at the same time, I want these issues resolved in a timely manner and not drag on forever and ever and ever. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Go ahead. Hi, good evening. Michael Cole, 535 Road Street. I'm sorry, what, what, what street? Okay. First of all, I really thank you for your public service. So I think it's, uh, you know, like for any public office, I think a lot of people should run and uh, so capable people can be elected. So first of all, thank you for your service. I just want to share a story that, uh, you know, we had last week. I had uh, about four neighbors invited for dinner party. So, you know, we talked about different things, politics and, of course, town. Um, I mean, I'm not an expert in every single thing, but I just want to share that how I feel and how our neighbors feel. So we, uh, frankly, a lot of my neighbors had some stories with the police, some of them good, and frankly, some of them not so good. I think all the stories have to be ideally 99, if not 100%, 99% good. So definitely something needs to be changed. Frankly, this lawsuits, I don't know the whole history behind it. I guess if somebody want to pay for my legal fees, I guess I can do whatever I want and I can sue anybody I want. I don't know how that agreement came about. I don't know how the contract came about. So that's some, uh, that kind of a thing that a lot of our neighbors, frankly myself, are pretty upset about it, not happy. Um, I'll tell you right now that from my part and from my neighbors, we'll be very upset if you go through with this, this global settlement. Because, uh, you know, they, frankly, I'm very upset about the comments made about Asians. I'm personally offended, so I just want to urge you from my perspective not to go with it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Go ahead, sir. <coughs> Good evening, everybody. Uh, first of all, my name is David Ambar Sumian, 33 Bayview Avenue in Goldwood Cliffs. I want to <laughs> congratulate two new elected councilmen and councilwomen. Congratulations. Uh, never met you first time. Um, one issue really bothers me um, about what happened with the uh, um, police chief. Um, a despicable thing, what he did. It's a despicable thing. I have here with me my father-in-law, 30 years being a Chief of Police of Yerevan City of Armenia, 30 years. I just asked him today, what do you think? Like, this is what happened, this is what he did, this is what he said, and he recorded himself. Um, he asked me a couple of questions, like uh, his background, 
when he graduated, how he became a police chief. I didn't know what to tell him. He says to me, things like that, what he says, even bad thing, you should be thinking silently. That's what he, tell, he tells me. It's a despicable. Why is it despicable? Because anybody else, if he moved, did something like that, that person will be probably in jail. I'm looking at the young policemen today. What do you guys want to teach them? Like, what's going to happen to them? Like, listen, this guy did this. It's okay. Couple uh, lawsuits and all that. And here we go. We said all with him. It doesn't supposed to be like that. And I heard, I hope it's truth. I heard somebody was telling him, that's wrong what you're doing. So that police officer, lieutenant, whoever was telling him that, that person should be really applauded and being a, as a police chief in this town. Not like police chief we had. What kind of, uh, what kind of attitude is that? I mean, you guys going to... Whatever you guys want to do, but every morning you guys going to wake up and you're going to think, and you're going to watch your face in the mirror, and you're going to think, what you did? That's wrong what he have done. Please, I hope you guys not going to play these political things. It's not somebody else recorded him. It's not somebody else told, oh, he said that. He just proved that he say that. What do you guys want? You guys want something more than we already did? Why you guys want to settle with a person like that? Why? Why even that issue supposed to be, I mean, uh, in the air, like settling with him? For what? For what? That was wrong what he said. I want to kill her, but I cannot. He said that. Nobody else say that. That was his words. And you guys all know that he say that. <coughs> it's wrong. And I hope you find inside you, in your heart, in your mind, that's wrong what he's done. And just punish the way he's supposed to be punished. I don't know the man. I heard what he said. I don't know him. Anybody, anybody else who speaks like that about the woman, it doesn't matter. He's a police chief or whatever. He should be locked up. Locked up. Period. Don't give another chance for these young police officers here to take a uh, wrong impression of what you guys are doing here. Good luck both of you and all of you. I hope Thank you guys you. do the right thing. Anyone else? Good evening. It's 60 uh, Mark Park. Tonight, I'm going to uh, bring this issue to the police chief. Last year, he did his statement is actually uh, anti-Asian comment, sexual harassment, some, some of the comment he put on the threatening. That is our board of policy. No tolerance policy. I think we have to give him some sort of punishment. We cannot accept any kind of the, you know, the dealing or maybe free of uh, uh, his charge. That is, we cannot accept it. I hope here you know, a lot of uh, you know the council member is uh, we are same boat Asian American. You have to think about the Asian American community, what we think about it, how we are think about this matters. This is a very, very important to me and our community. Almost 40% of the Asian American residents live in this town. So you know, you're talking about, keep talking about the legal uh, settlement, but uh, you know, small, uh, even the legal fee is involved in here, but we're going to make sure about it for the future, any kind of the further, you know, the incident developed in this town, we cannot accept about it. So even though we paid about the legal fee, we have to make a correction. That's why I really, really ask you guys to do the right thing tonight. Okay, that's why I'm here. Please do it right away. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else? Here in Okay. 
Russell Perino, 220 Fairview Avenue. Good evening, everyone. A couple of quick points. Uh, affordable housing. I am glad to see that the, there's two resolutions on the agenda this evening with regard to the affordable housing. Um, no one says it's perfect. These things can never be perfect. Um, I haven't heard any suggestions from anyone how to make it better, which I think is the kind of conversations that could happen at some point. Um, but I urge this council to move forward uh, and uh, and uh, endorse is the proper word the plan that was uh, that was put forth. Um, secondly, uh, the ad hoc affordable housing committee um, mayor had uh, sent out an email and requested a meeting to this evening at six o'clock. Myself and Carol McMorrow came here at six and sat in the conference room. Uh, the mayor also called in and no one else came. Uh, as I have publicly and privately offered, uh, my service as planning board chair, and I think Carol McMorrow has done the same in helping this process go forward. Uh, clearly, it's not going to be over when you endorse, if you endorse this plan. There's going to be hundreds of other steps coming in the future as well. And um, I just, I think there needs to be some sort of um, Continuity. I've said this before, you know. But for the mayor to call a meeting, which I think he's got the right to do, and for no one to attend or no one to be available, it's not a good thing, right? It's not a good thing for the town. Uh, nothing bad comes of communication. So and I'm just going to touch on one thing where, you know, Joe Parisi Jr. Um, said many times, you know, you don't have to respect me respect my position and I think there's been <coughs> since January especially a um, an attempt to sideline and keep the mayor from participating in borough affairs just tonight uh, for example where no one thought he was going to call in of course he wanted to call in I heard about that last week that he had hoped to call in this is not yes, surprising so why is it so impossible to include the CEO of our company, of, the, of our town, in these conversations. You may not like to hear what he has to say all the time, but he's the mayor. And as long as he is the mayor, he has the right, and the, you all have the obligation to include him in the conversations and in the emails. Because you, you're, you, you're, it's not just him, it's the position of the mayor that, that is diluted every single time there is either a slight or and ignoring his right to participate in a particular event. So I urge you all just to think about that again and to, and to realize that, you know what, you have control. It's okay. I get that. We all get it. But still have the responsibility to offer the respect that's, that's necessary here. So I will uh, look forward to hearing from the council. Um, on this affordable housing ad hoc committee. I mean, it's there. And I'm not sure why there's such reticence to try to uh, have meetings that can only make things better. Nothing bad comes of communication. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Motion to close. I have a question. Uh, you have a closed session item that was asked to be done in open session. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you ordered it before that, so I just want to make sure that it's done before you. Was he the attorney? Yeah. Uh, can you identify yourself, sir? Uh, okay. Um. Just a moment. Totally. 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 Okay, we'll get back to you. Uh, Carol McMorrow, 489 Summit Street. Um, before, I, um, make, before I make my comments, I, I just would like to ask the council, are we going to, as a public, because we don't know what's going to be added, if anything is going to be added, are you going to open to the public for comment for any resolutions that we don't know about that may be added after you come out of closed because um, your special meeting was very vague. Um, the advertisement said 
which was very confusing. It didn't say action may be taken. It said action will be taken, which almost seems like you already made decisions on what you're going to do. You're doing something. It's the same notice, you know, as usual. But we will open to the public when we come back. Yeah. With whatever? Oh, okay. Appreciate that. That's something new. I just something want to add. New. We've never opened to the public after a closed session, but we're going to do that. Ellen, respectfully, that is not something new. What you're doing tonight is something new. You know, I need to, I, I, Ellen, I really don't want, this is not a back and forth. You find this whole thing amusing, and I have to tell you, please, okay, it's not something new. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, okay. The first thing I just wanted to talk about is the ad hoc committee. Um, Mr. Perino and I were here at 6 o'clock. Um, I'm disappointed that no one else showed up. Um, I would have appreciated an email. My time is very important. And um, for the record, I have repeatedly made myself available. Um, I don't know if there are members of the council who are preventing Mr. Perino or myself's input. Uh, which would be invaluable since uh, I was the council, the council liaison for almost three years on affordable housing. And, um, you know, there's, I can't think of any good reason why you would not want to access that information to assist you and, and, and help you. Um, but I just want to, for the record, read a couple of things. Um, uh, there's been a lot of conversation about the ad hoc committee that was set forth by resolution at the November 8, 2018 meeting. Um, the mayor, as as the mayor, has a statutory right to make ad hoc committees without consent of council. There are uh, several types of committees. One of them is an ad hoc. Some committees um, require consent of council. Some committees do not. The mayor has a right to appoint an ad hoc committee. So if your intention is to dissolve that committee, at the same meeting tonight, he can just create the same committee again in an ad hoc and we're back to square one. So I hope that everyone will um, find a way to work work through that. Um, or for this committee to continue until the end of the litigation was what was in the resolution. Uh, obviously we're still in litigation. And um, Mr. Serenian also reported at the meeting of the planning board the hours and hours of work that were put into um, reaching our goals and fulfilling our obligations um, at the, Janu I think it was the January 7, 2019 planning board meeting. And I just don't see any downside to it. Um, number two, respectfully, Ms. Sabari, no disrespect to you. Um, you have a conflict with 800 Sylvan and you need to do the right thing. Um, I have been repeatedly, I've heard it stated publicly, repeatedly, uh, that there are serious concerns about Ms. Sabari and her um, conflict with the 800 Sylvan property. You have many other uh, uh, council members up there that are well qualified to jump in that do not pose uh, the threat of a conflict of interest. Your home is within 200 feet of the 800 Sylvan property. You have been noticed on different applications with 800 Sylvan. And there's just no good reason to expose the borough and its residents to litigation just because you don't want to acknowledge that you have a conflict. You should play it safe and just recuse. Um, that's my opinion, you're not doing so, it could, could really adversely affect the borough of Anchor Cliffs and its residents, in my opinion. Um, tonight's meeting, I pulled this up on my uh, phone. I wasn't planning on spe speaking on this. Miss Duffy, I have to tell you something. I have no idea what's going on. The way you just acted to the mayor was absolutely out of line. It was a show, in my opinion, and I don't know what you're doing. I have an email here where we were all copied on. Ms. O, I appreciate that you asked Ms. Duffy, um, is the mayor calling in? As, of course, you would for any other member there. And she turned around to you and said, I don't have any knowledge or a number that he's going to be calling in. She's on an email right here. And so... You might have m forgot about this, Ms. Hall, but you're on it also. Mr. Serenian's on it. Mr. Um, Ms. Tread is on it. And Ms. Clark is on it. Russ Perino and myself and the mayor. And he says, at 7.06 yesterday, 
Lizette, call me for both meetings today. I also want the phone number for the dais. She outright misrepresented the facts to you, Ms. Owen. You asked her a direct question about is the mayor calling in. Guys, I don't, I, listen, I don't want to back and forth, okay? I've already given you. Did you know that he was going to call in? Uh, Ms. Memora, did you know that the mayor was going to call in? And did I know him? Yeah. He threw us all an email. I'm on the email with you. Okay. So maybe he could on an email. email. No, it, I, it wasn't open to the public. I didn't want to yell out. I had to wait for my. I, That's I, I fine. appreciate that. But um, <coughs> we were all supposed to be together for the uh, ad hoc committee, too, and call in. And nobody showed up. I mean, Miss Ducker didn't show up for that either, and she didn't respond to either of us that nobody was coming. So I'm just saying the games that are being played, and I understand the back and forth with the mayor. <coughs> He's still the mayor, and some obviously she misrepresented the facts because it's in the email and we're all on it. It's outrageous what she just did. Yep, she did. Hold on, Mayor. I, yes, and I will, excuse me. I will publicly state to the public, I apologize. I did not see that email. I don't think I would publicly lie to everyone saying that the mayor did gonna, not send me an email. Uh, so uh, to the public, uh, uh, I apologize. I'm not going to okay. deal with it separately. Uh, oh, okay. Over 100 emails in a day. I will deal with it separately. Whatever. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, okay. The Oprah's, and again, I know you have a lot of things that you all have been dealing with. I know I brought to your attention at that last meeting and I needed you to look into Miss um, Duffy's lack of responses and her responses to me in those Oprah's. Uh, maybe you didn't have a time to look at that yet. I would really appreciate it if you would find that time to look at it. I'm still waiting for certain Oprah's. She's denying them. You're exposing the borough to further litigation. She, my opinion, and I'm consulting with Oprah attorneys right now, but she cannot just deny for whatever reason she feels like you have to have a legal reason to deny under Oprah. And um, I believe there are a lot of uh, errors being made. I appreciate you looking into that. I'm still waiting for the um, follow-up on the tape recording um, on the Oprah that Lieutenant Tracy uh, put in that I brought to everybody's attention at the last meeting. Lieutenant Tracy was kind enough to offer his assistance to Ms. Duffy. She said she had not reached out to him last week. Have you reached out to him yet, Ms. Duffy? I'm not going to answer you. You said okay. this wasn't a back and forth. Okay, Send well, me an email and I, I follow up. I will follow another one. Okay, okay. thanks. Thank but I'm still out. Wait, um, 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 if that Oprah is outstanding and there are several others that, that are outstanding uh, as well. Okay. Um, Mr. Wunsch, quickly on the tapes. Are we got, is it going to be the same list that Ms. Rizzuto prepared? Uh, no. So... So she prepared a list of tapes that were going to be available to the public that were not attorney-client privilege um, under Judge Farrington's order. Are you... Um, well, first of all, she wasn't operating under Judge Farrington's order because she didn't have Judge Farrington's order at the time. Yes, she did. Well, not that I'm aware of. She didn't okay. do anything about it, so how do I know? Plus, I'm still waiting for her to turn over files to me, which okay. I have not. Listen, I th that wasn't my question. But that, that's not, not true. true. And I don't well, believe well, that that's true. Point. Okay, you and kept I told you that I, I am not following her list. That's correct. Well, uh, I'm asking you as someone who put an Oprah in and who did who did have Judge Farrington's order. In fact, I, I gave it to the clerk. When, and by the way, there's a great thing, civil case access right now. It's free to everyone. You, all you have to do is sign in. Every letter, every paper, everybody's got access to it. It's amazing. And it's amazing what you find out of what's going on. Um, so you can, anybody could have accessed her order even if Ms. Rizzuto didn't give it to you, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so, for the record, are you saying that you're not going to be uh, recognizing, uh, because I have my own list from Dominic Carmignola. No, your question so, is all over the place. Please ask, ask the my question. My question is, are you respecting the list that Anne-Marie Rizzuto provided under Oprah to many of us, uh, Ms. O'Shea just asked as well, of what was to be produced, and you asked for an extension. You said it would be produced by the 25th. And are you producing all of those tapes on that list? No. Okay. Will you pre be producing tomorrow a Vaughn index as to why you are not? That will be handled through counsel, who has been handling this matter for us, Mr. Rutenberg. We'll be preparing that. No, this is an open and we're question. Going back to the this judge. is a, no. This is an I, open. I, no. Let me finish. We're going back to the judge because there are certain things 
that quite candidly i felt the predecessor dropped the ball on ok ok but i will tell you this are you, are you going to be handling are you going to be handing over i will over tell you this ok there's nothing that i held back that would not have been justifiable under HIPAA, okay, right of private 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 right of private privacy, okay, and that's it. Okay, I don't think that a phone conversation regarding a woman who fell and broke her hip and subsequently died as a result of it should be listened to by everybody here. Okay, so there are certain things that Ms. Rizzuto did not do. Okay, I'm not here so to, I, I'm, I'm not telling Mr. you that Lynch, I, this. As someone who has I, heard. I will tell you this. I will tell you this. There is nothing being held back that is hiding anything other than HIPAA and privacy with regards to certain things. Well, we're going to have If a... you want to get technical about it, okay, there is a number of things on there regarding prayers. Prayers about your family, prayers about the mayor's family, prayers about people who have children who are drug addicts. Do you think their names should be brought out and, and blasted across so that everyone could hear? Not me. That's a privacy matter. And their full names put on there. So well, as far as I'm concerned, Mr. Weiss, Mr. Rizzuto dropped the ball, I picked it up, and I ran with it. Okay, respectfully, respectfully. That is your opinion. You have been here for all of two weeks. And obviously, Mr. Carmagnola, who is representing the borough, and has pre prepared not his... If I, I did this, not interrupt you, Not on the matter with Judge Farrington. So if you want to sir, get counsel correct, it's sir, Dave Rutenberg, and Rutenberg agrees with me. That is not a correct statement, and I would appreciate if you let me finish, and then if you have to comment, you're more than welcome to. But this is not for a back and forth. I, I hate to say this to you, Al, but you know what? I've been involved in that litigation for three years. You're here for two weeks. Please don't put yourself into the same category. I might, might not have gone to law school, but I've become very um, aware of the particulars of this case because I've been involved in it. So Respect I've, I've sat for hours. Al, you need to stop. Tapes. Okay. Hours. Okay. Quite frankly, Al, you're on the tapes. There's a reference to. Oh, okay. Carol, please. Uh, you know what? Uh, the, the, the tapes you need to on Friday. You'll hear everything. You'll hear my name brought up. Uh, so, folks, I didn't this is not excise for... that by any stretch of the imagination. I did. The warts and all are on the tapes, folks. Listen on Friday, and we'll see where things go. Okay? That's all I can say. Okay. Can you stop taking things so personally? You're a borough attorney. You attack me I'm not. Personally you're not even letting like this. Oh, can you please get control of your borough attorney? You're atta he's attacking me and not allowing me to comment. Okay. Do you still want to have anything else to say? Like the last borough attorney. But I didn't. You did. No, no, he did. Okay, Ellen. I received. You know what? Let um. Thank you. Thank you. Finish. Thank you. All I was bringing up, Miss O, is that there are certain tapes there, and he brought up the statement about the prayers. I would not have brought that up, but given the fact. That Mr. Wunsch brought up the, fair, the prayers. There are very disturbing comments made by Chief Chaffee in those prayers. Okay? Very disturbing comments. And not about individuals, about himself. <laughs> and everybody on this council, if they missed it, they need to go back and listen to those portions of that tape regarding himself. So there's a lot of issues on those tapes. But... I don't appreciate him blanketly making incorrect references, number one. Number two, Ms. O, Mr. Wunsch, up until, and I too went on um, the civil case access room, and I pulled up his uh, letter um, regarding his representing Brian Murphy. He's representing Brian Murphy, and he's trying to intervene into a case that he has on the agenda for settlement with the PBA. Which hat is he wearing? Is he representing Brian Murphy? Is he representing the borough? Is he trying to get Brian Murphy off of disciplinary charges? I just can't understand and get it straight who he's representing. But these tapes have Brian Murphy all over them. And by Ms. O'Shea's uh, statement, he put in for the chief of police position. So is Mr. Wunsch trying to help his client get 
an edge on a chief of police position by whatever. I don't know. But he's got conflicts, and he needs to respect them, Ms. O. And I think that's what everybody is bringing up. Um, on the agenda, regard, we'll, we will be able to speak again about anything Mr. having Warner, to do. Warner, um, yes, Debbie. I, I think that our professionals are waiting for us. If we're going to open up to the public, I'm going to suggest that perhaps we consider listening to the gentleman who's here on the rice issue yes. at the court and going into closed session so that we can get back out here so that the public can, if we're going to open, I suggest that we close now. Our professionals are being paid hourly. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, a good point. That they can I mean, I, no, I'm, I'm sorry. You should have just waited till I finished, though, if you wanted to do that. I'm that sorry. Was, I thought you were done. Excuse me. Finished. Okay. Um, again, as for the advertisement with all of these rights notices for all of these individuals, I, I, I'm really uh, disappointed that, um, and while you guys have the majority, you could do whatever you, you want to do, I, I think it is, um, I, I, I've never witnessed this much, this much information going on to a special meeting, ricing so many employees wanting to, um, Obviously, it's got something to do with their, their employment. And to not make this more public, I, um, I'm very accustomed to working with our borough website. I knew where to go uh, on the calendar, but I didn't even think to click on that date to see that was that had uploaded um, an agenda there. Um, the public notice was not published in the newspaper until today. If people come from work, they're not even going to read that until they get home from work tonight. It's an embarrassment to a new council as yourselves who ran on transparency and said you need to get everything out to the public. I thought this meeting was about an affordable housing meeting <laughs> and a hearing. And, I'm, and I looked at it and I'm like, where did all this stuff come? Um, I think it's wrong. I think um, it's a disgrace that you have a police committee meeting and not allowing anybody else to know what's going on. You're a council. They're not a lot. I've never heard that you can direct a borough attorney to do this type of work and not let your fellow council members, especially the mayor, know what's going on. It just smells bad and it doesn't look like you were up to any good. Um, I will be able to speak about the uh, choppy yes, situation. Sure. I will wait then. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Steve. Do I have a motion to close to the public? Second. Second. Only in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Sir, please come up. You want some public? Yeah. Just, can I just say something for the record? Uh, just for the record, the three employees, uh, uh, Mr. Wunsch, the three employees were riced within 48 hours. Yes. They all returned their rice notices today by the uh, due date and time, and the entire mayor and council received copies of same. Excellent. So two, uh, em two employees, actually three employees, um, two employees, uh, Mr. Casey, Mr. Chaffee and Mr. Mira, which, um, three, asked for enclosed okay. session, and Mr. Cohn asked for public. Okay. Thank you. So once again, can you identify yourself yes, and who afternoon. you're here for? Good afternoon. My name is Brian Bernstein. I'm an attorney. I'm a former council person from another locale and former municipal court judge. So I, I'm paying to, to hear some of the things that you're facing. Uh, my client uh, is Antoinette Saccone. She received the rights notice and filed, as uh, Ms. Duffy has indicated, a request for open session. I would ask that you reopen uh, to go to open session because I believe Ms. Zoe would have closed it uh, and this portion should be in open session uh, as per our open response. And once you do that, I'll have Ms. Saccone uh, step up to sit with me and then have you tell me why uh, she was well, so, um, it is open right now, so uh, okay. you may well, close to it. So 
So she'll be still kind. Of just yeah. Um, I, actually, I'm going to defer it to the uh, board attorney and let him speak uh, about why she was doing it. The um, several years ago, at the time, Councilwoman Eastwood and Councilwoman McMorrow had brought up in, uh, information regarding the court and about the need to perhaps have a part-time court administrator. There was a study that Ms. Eastwood had put together with regards to it, um, and at that point in time, we had the, the, the council. Well, the council had decided they wanted to keep it full time. Unfortunately, the number of cases have dropped dramatically in the court, and the amount of funds generated have dropped dramatically in the court. So much so that in a year we have not been able to even cover Ms. Sacone's salary. Now this is not in any disrespect to Ms. Sacone. Ms. Sacone is a highly competent professional. She has done a wonderful job putting together the computer system in that office. I have, um, you know, she really automated the whole place, did a great job. What the council has decided or is going to, to discuss is making the position well, <laughs> that, that right notice was because of the fact that the, there was a, a solution pending about making it a part time. And that's the only thing that's going to be done. She's going to be offered the position at a part time position because we cannot justify a full time court administrator. There is too much litigation in this town, too much money that's being spent with regards to the other things going on, and we can't justify a full-time court administrator. When we had the camera system here, that was a whole different thing. But now you can pay your tickets online. There are no very, very few, if any, people who come into this building to pay their tickets. Majority of people come in, but there are some people that do, but the majority do not, okay? The majority will file a notice that they are going to be uh, coming to court, I mean, you're a former judge, and I've been before you a bunch of times, and, and you're a great judge, um, and you know that a lot of people come in to fight the tickets. We have matters, calendars with 20 matters on. Okay? We had, in the month of December, we didn't even meet the second time in December because there wasn't enough matters to be placed on the calendar. I have the calendars, they've seen the calendars, and it's not Tony's fault. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not her fault. Okay, but they can't justify a full-time salary on a position that is not generating enough revenue to make it full-time. If, if I could just ask a few questions. You mentioned uh, former council person Eastwood. Uh, I believe she may have said something about that was the individual behind me. Uh, well, she had done work on the thing. She had asked for a whole bunch of numbers. I remember that at that time I was the public defender, okay, and uh, Mark Saperstein, I believe, was the judge, okay. So this was in a prior administration. No, I understand. Okay. But, but is, is there a document? That was Not that I'm aware of. That was Not that I'm aware of. Is there a study that was done there was a, for the new council? Uh, or the current administration as to the number of tickets that are written, the number of cases that are on. There, the there, there was numbers generated, uh, requested of the, the borough clerk, okay, regarding pe the, what had been the situation. Can I ask if that be first to, to me? Has that been asked of from Bergen County, from Brenda's? I, I don't know. Okay, because I only asked that because all, all that information would come from Central, and I don't know that you have it. I don't know what you've asked Ms. Uh, Sacone for no. that information, so I don't no, know what your information is it's accurate. The monthly report. Uh, the monthly report. Yeah. We have the monthly reports, and that's what this the information came off of, correct? No, so I didn't know anything about yeah. Right now, there's a temporary budget in place, yes. I assume, from the yes. reorganization date? Yes. And that would include the court system? Mm -hmm. uh, does it include a prosecutor? Um, yeah, we should. Yes, and, with the prosecutor and public defender. Include, I mean, the duties of your certified municipal court administrator are done by, by who in this borough? Tony alone or others? Well, I believe that on court session, Tony has the, uh, there is a, a part-time uh, employee that comes in and assists her on the night of the court. So 
I, I'm not certain what information you have other than for this new council as to the picture you have taken as to whether this court is running efficiently. It's certainly not supposed to make money. It's not, it's, it's not a question of running efficiency, uh, efficiently. I mean, as I said before, this is not disrespectful to Mr. Cohen. No, I, I okay, understand. Okay, and, and, and understand that I have, you know, seen that she did a miraculous job taking a system that was not um, up to speed, okay, because our prior court administrator, it was not technologically advanced, okay, and had a system that, that basically I could understand because I'm not technologically advanced also. <coughs> and Tony put everything on, on, on the computer eyes. She did a great job, okay? Right. But I'm, only, I'm only asking you, what court personnel are you considering Part -time. Well, everything is part-time, except the uh, court administration. Excuse me, Al. Al, did you provide me with that information that you referenced about the prior history? I'm sorry, did you ask me for it? I don't recall. I didn't know you were doing this. Did you provide it to me, Al? I didn't. I don't understand your question, sir. You never asked me for anything. Did you provide me with the Did you provide me with the information that you referenced in your soliloquy? Okay, I'm not. I'm not Kreskin, so I can't read your mind. If you didn't ask me for it, I didn't provide it to you. Well, Al, it's, it's your responsibility to provide me something because I don't know what you're thinking in your mind. Your job is a borough attorney. I'm the mayor. You are supposed to provide me with that information before you get up in public and do what you just did. Understood? I disagree. Right. If I can get back to you, you mentioned, uh, Mr. Marsh, you mentioned a resolution. What resolution were you referring to as it relates to the administrator? A resolution to make the position part time. And is that a resolution that was on tonight or some prior night? No, it's on tonight. Can I see the resolution? I have well, we haven't discussed it yet. So. Well, so it's not a resolution. It, it's a they haven't read it, but they, they didn't discuss it. Right. Yeah, they, haven't they haven't been discussed yet. They, they, they're going to do it. So, the judge, it's all part time in terms of. That's exactly right. With the exception of the court administrator, it's part time. And who will be doing her role when she's not here? For this municipality. We have to have a RFQ sent out to see if we can hire someone part time. And obviously, if we can't hire, and then that, and we're hoping that Tony will take the position. No, I understand that you're hoping Tony will get right. a reduction in hours. Correct. I, I, that's what, there's no position for her to take. She has the position. Well, exactly. And then we're hoping that, that, that if the ordinance, if the resolution passes and it is given to the feds part time, that she stays. I understand that that's what you would like, but the RFQ would be for a part-time clerk, or what is that role to fill in those hours on a part-time basis to augment the hours that Tony would No different than a number of other towns that which have done the same thing, but including Norwood, including... Uh, I'm uh, just trying to understand what this town is considering. So what is it that you're considering for that RFQ? Part-time, well, it would be a part-time clerk, a part-time court administrator. In addition to Tony? No, 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 no. It be it's Tony's job to take. But it's her job. But what I'm it's saying is, it's that it, it's a, you've answered your question. No, I haven't. You see, to Tony has tenure, and it surprised me to learn that she was on the appointment list on the organization as a tenured employee of the borough. She is not to be given an appointment each year that runs from year to year as your other appointment uh, employees. And so she was treated differently in terms of being a tenured employee, but not being treated as a tenured employee, only in title. And my concern is that what you're doing is you're re reducing hours and will ultimately supplement those hours with a non-tenured person because the role of this of the administrator cannot be filled on just a part-time basis because emergencies happen, warrants happen, drug arrests happen, DWIs happen. It's not just about filtering and processing tickets. And I know that, and I know you know that. And so when that call comes in for uh, a warrant to be issued or for bail to be set 
and the judge isn't available, and Tony is down here or has to come down to the courthouse. What other courts have done is they have hired part-timers. And in doing so, they fill the void that's created when the full-timer, who's not tenured, is now given fewer hours. My concern is what you're doing is you are, in essence, eviscerating the tenured position that she has because you say, and I don't mean this in, in any personal way, but because the borough has looked at it and said, we took a snapshot and we looked at how busy our court is, and you know what? This court's not making the kind of money we once made when we had these cameras. But I can tell you, as a former municipal court judge, it is not the role of the judiciary to make money. It is not the role of the judiciary to run as a profit. It is not a business center. It is not a profit center. Okay. And so your residents and people affected, the people affected by your constituents in this town, it's a very busy town. I couldn't park in your parking lot because of the number of police cars that you have. And that's not a bad thing. But I know it's a busy town. And it's at a crossroads with New York City and the bridge and other towns that for a court to become a part-time court without any notice at all to the division manager in Hackensack, without any discussion as to a change in direction of the court to get their input so that you can make the best decision and not just, I'd like to make a penny-wise, pound-foolish decision because I can save $5 or I can save $5,000. I think you really needed to bring in the division manager because they're there to help this municipality and every other municipality. And it doesn't sound as if that happened. It sounded, I know, as you misspoke when you said it. I'm not suggesting that it was anything intentional. But that a decision has been made. I think a decision... I misspoke on that. Like I said, I spoke to Tony earlier tonight. But I said that up front. I said that I take it that you misspoke. But I think in part, when the council has, before there's been any discussion about a direction of a municipality, whether they're going to go into shared services, whether they're going to reduce the court structure or change the court structure, if you're already at that point where you have a resolution on the agenda tonight for closed session, a decision has been made. It's not something that you're asking the public for information. You're asking the judiciary for information. You're asking your court personnel for information. You're just making a decision as if you walked into a hospital and said, don't do the surgery because we can give her aspirin. And yes, you would have saved money, but you may have lost a patient. And your patient or the constituents that you all represent just voted two of you in. Congratulations. Tough job. I'm glad you're taking it because I did it for 10 years. And it's just great. I hope you do it for 10 years. But the same... So this is the mayor. Can I just interrupt for one second? This is the mayor. I was not aware that this was happening until I got notified by the Bergen County clerk's office in charge of courts. And I don't support any change, just for the record. I'd like to see and ask that you reserve your decision or defer your decision to another night. I'm more than happy to meet with the police committee or counsel or the mayor or anyone that you would like. I understand what it's like when there's one party as the mayor and the rest of the council is another. I've come from that. I've seen that. But what I would like is the opportunity to see your information to make certain that this town is doing the right thing and not ending up in either litigation or issues that plague because of the rush to a quick fix judgment. It's already in the budget and moving it to some other date so we can share this information and discuss it seems to make the right sense and certainly consistent with what the residents have said in terms of what they want from the council. And it would surprise me if you turned your back on that tonight and said, okay, close session. And I will say, Ms. Park, I'm not sure I agree with you. Take it for whatever it's worth. 
But if you're going into closed session and you're going to discuss anything where there's going to be any action on the council, you have to come back out into public session. That's what I'm saying. We're coming back to public session. I think you misunderstood. I did. Yeah, we're definitely coming back. back. Because if you don't, then then, then you have issues and I'm not looking for this town to have any issues. Right. So, but. I'm saying we didn't do it in the past, but we're going to. Okay. I I, I think you need to. Uh, So, can I ask if you would agree not as it relates at least to the court until you get information from the division manager? And I'm more than happy to meet with Al, with you, or with anyone from uh, the the mayor council. This was supposed to be a discussion. Yeah, it's a little discussion. So, I think everybody's putting a cart before the horse on a lot of issues tonight. So, what? Yeah, so you discuss it out here. He's here. He wants to discuss it. So, why don't you discuss it? You're Mr. Horsman. So, so my view is I, I agree with you. However, the proverbial cat is out of the bag. But you already have a resolution. I know you We always have a resolution. Yeah. You were in the council. You know that too. No, you, you always have a resolution. Have so, so in essence, what what should well, well, in, in this, this town, that's always been that way. Okay. So, so in essence, at least from my experience, so an issue does come up. It's brought into closed session if it involves. Uh, generic employment issues or direction of what, what, do we, what do we want to do with PBW, what do we want to do with ambulance for, what do we want to do, not speaking specifically about any employee. Uh, and, and then maybe on the drill down, there's going to be, well, this is this may affect Mr. Cohen, this may affect somebody else. And so you may have to rice them. There's not a resolution, because a resolution means the issue has already been discussed. For Ms. Duff, for Ms. Duff, to get no deference to Ms. Duff, because I'm sure she's got more work than she needs. I'm listening to the amount of matters on your agenda and the amount of litigation. For her to prepare resolutions on issues that are in their nascent stages to discuss what you're going to do with your court system, either it means the decision is already at hand or at really at the beck and call of let's come out to open session and make a decision. Uh, if not, it shouldn't be a resolution because it should be for the next work session. A resolution, if after this work session, there's a decision that we should take it to the public. Now, I have asked that the matter be discussed in public session, so I would like to hear the discussion as to what you're doing, the basis upon which you're doing it, unless you're willing to agree with me, at least for today, that it will be withdrawn so that... Um, Mr. Bernstein, thank you for your um, statement, and um, I'd like to ask the council what uh, you wish to do on the subject well, tonight. I guess I misunderstood. I thought you... I'm sorry. I guess I must have misunderstood. I thought in order to discuss making that position part-time that we had to raise the you, current employee. You, you, you so did. You didn't discuss... Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. You so I it. didn't, you know, I didn't realize that it was, I didn't look at this as a fait accompli. I looked at this as a discussion that we were going to have, and I was told that the court administrator, I don't know Tony personally, and, you know, I have nothing bad to say about her because I'm just new to the board. Sure. So I'm just trying to understand for the borough, I'm not looking for this to be a money maker. I was looking for this not to be a loser. Um, Right now we spend more money to have this system in place on a full-time basis. So I was just looking to see what could be done. Could the position be made part-time? I heard you loud and clear that there are some other things that maybe we needed to look at that uh, we should go back and look at. And and don't forget Um, the standard. I don't don't want to lose sight of that. And and I want to understand there were other people on the uh, reorg agenda who attended also. I don't know why that is. It surprised me also, but it wasn't just Tony. There are other people who attended it also who happened to be on that list of appointment. So it definitely was not done to point you out uh, compared to anybody else. That's true. So um, I think my recommendation that we table this for tonight and just have do a little more research and then bring it back out and, and talk about it. Because the, the goal here was just to try to do what we promised the taxpayers we were going to do, which was to reduce our costs. That has to do with legal fees, you know, um, all, all the administrative expenses that we have now. So it really wasn't done with any intention of 
getting rid of an individual. It was done with looking at different positions and how we could save some money in the town. That was it. And, and I, just, I just don't want you as a new council person uh, to fall into, and, and I don't know if you're on a police committee or one of those committees, but to fall into that, this, that the court is a ticket house. The court's not a ticket house. I, I sat on too many cases as a judge dealing with spousal abuse, dealing with terrorist threats, dealing with issues that affect neighbor versus neighbor, and it's not just uh, someone speeding, not just someone passing a stop sign, but it's about issues that really affect the very core of spouses, husbands, wives, children, uh, and safety. I mean, these guys that work, you know, under you know the, the PD, they're at the point people over with drunk driving, and that may only get more involved if there's going to be uh, legalization of, of marijuana, because then that brings a whole new group of matters that will ultimately have to come before the court, and I don't think you have the long lens on as to how it will affect this, this community. So I would only also, also ask Ms. O that uh, since I do represent Ms. Cone, that once it is going to be brought back on the agenda, that I be given notice so that it's not something I have to hear about from someone else, uh, because again, I would like that to be uh, an open session unless I've had discussions privately with counsel. Uh, to show me as to what, how things will be here. So I'll give you a call. Just okay. Um, so just so you know, we have our labor attorney here, uh, Mr. Ruderman, sitting. Do you have any comments to um, what's going on here? Well, with I do agree with Councilman Versus that you're putting the, the cart before the horse. Traditionally, what happens in scenarios like this is you have a closed session before the regular meeting starts, that you started with a public session, and certainly um, Ms. Bernstein has a right to have the discussion take place in public under, under the rights, no, no doubt about it, mm -hmm. um, but it should have taken place at the beginning uh, of that, or you can bring him into closed session, not in front of everyone else, and then allow him to make his presentation, depending on how Mr. Bernstein wants it to be handled. Now, having heard everything he said, it's up to you whether you want to have a further discussion on this or take his idea to mm -hmm. table the uh, table the. Uh, do I have a yeah. motion to? Well, I just want to. Yeah, we'll table it. But I just want to say that it was my understanding as well that we were going to reduce the hours and that that we weren't going to fill. We we're going to get. It, we we're going to RFQ and get another part timer to fill the hours. That was that was the job. Was that it was a reduction in hours and that was it. So if. Tony, of course, is yours. I understand that. But if she didn't want it, that's when we would RFQ for the same reduced part-time hours. There was, like, not, you know, there wasn't two positions available, that's was my, my understanding. Right. And, and that is correct. There would not be two positions. Um, but, you know, I thank you for being here and, and explaining to us about you know, the different variables um, of not having open court. And that would, you know, I would definitely consider it. And, therefore, I'll make a motion to table it for today. Um, and then, so I guess we don't. Yeah, we don't need to. Okay, so we'll table it. Well, it's not a motion to table, but I'd like to at least have uh, it done from the like council that no action will be taken tonight with respect to uh, my client. No action will be taken. No action, no action. No action will be taken. So, so if I could be so forward just to hand sure. you a card sure. since it wasn't placed on the record, and you can place on the record. Thank you. Like. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Motion to go to court? Yep. Second. We're coming back. We're going to go. We're coming, yeah, coming back out. Yeah. We did. We did. We're not taking any action, so we're going to take a vote. Oh, we're going to close session. Make a motion to go into second, uh, close second. session. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Does that do you have to read any language for us yes, to go ahead? Yes, hold on. Please read it. Resolution 1954. Resolution authorizing closed session at meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. Whereas the mayor and council of the borough of Inglewood Cliffs has deemed it necessary to go into closed session to discuss certain confidential matters. 
whereas the minutes of the closed session will remain confidential as permitted under the Open Public Meetings Act or shall be released when there is no further need for confidentiality as authorized by the borough attorney. Now, therefore, be resolved that the mayor and council of the borough of Inglewood Cliffs will go into close... No, I did not. The mayor does not... Uh, so the council president both the mayor and council of the borough of Ang okay the council of the borough of Angola Cliffs will go into closed session for the following for the following matters as permitted under the Open Public Meetings Act NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 12 pending litigation regarding borough of Angola Cliffs BERL 6119 dash one five eight hundred Sylvan Avenue LLC versus Borough of Inglewood Cliffs Mayor and Council and Planning Board B E R L six nine one eight eight hundred Sylvan Avenue LLC Planning Board I'm sorry eight hundred Sylvan Avenue versus Planning Board B E R L nine zero eight eight one seven Chaffee versus Borough of Angola Cliffs, B E R L eight nine two zero one eight Chaffee Chief of Police versus Borough of Angola Cliffs, Marion Cramjack B E R L zero zero seven zero five eight Michael Chaffee versus Borough Mayor C McMorrow Wu M Park Docket number two colon six C V zero four five three six Federal Scott Muir versus Borough Chief Chaffee B E R L seven six one six Borough versus Boswell Engineering B E R L seven two zero one one six James Tracy versus Borough of Englewood Cliffs, B E R L 596918. Englewood Cliffs versus PBA Local 45, B E R L 0873218. PBA Local 45 versus Englewood Cliffs, docket number 2, colon 16, CV 08053, Federal. Personnel. Court Administrator was discussed in open session, no action taken. Recreation Director, Chief of Police, and three grievances on police. Thank you. So we do the we can do the personal yeah. ones first. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to let you know which one. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Motion. Do I have a motion to come out of closed session? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We're going to. We were in closed session, and we have certain resolutions that were added um, as a result of the conversations in closed session. We're going to do the personnel matters first. Um, there's no personnel matters. So, I mean, should we going to do these resolutions regarding settlement in the matter of... I think you should read the titles of all the resolutions we're adding that were not Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, this one. I think we're going to do it that way. Yeah, 51 okay. 52, the public has 51. Resol resolution 19-51, resolution 19-52, these have been previously provided. Yes. Resolution 19-55, resolution approving a settlement in the matter of Borough of Englewood Cliffs versus Boswell Engineering Company at Al, Superior Court of New Jersey, Law Division, Bergen County Docket, BER-L-7201-16. Mm -hmm. Are we? Yeah, he's on. The mayor's on. Don't like, don't forget. Resolution 19-56. Resolution approving a settlement in the matter of the Borough of Englewood Cliffs and Chief of Police Michael Chiaffi at Al, U.S. District Court, docket number 2, colon 16-CV-0436-ES-MAH. Resolution 19-57. Resolution authoring, authorizing payment of council fees and costs in accordance with court's decision of December 21, 2018. Resolution 19-58, approval of settlement agreement with Angle Cliffs PBA Local 45. Resolution 19-59, resolution no, we, we, that was all. Okay. Resolution 19-59, resolution rescinding disciplinary charges, and resolution 19-60, resolution creating a new subcommittee regarding affordable housing litigation. Councilman uh, do you have something to oh. say? Um, I'd like to make a motion to 
since that's just late hour, limit the public portion, which we're going to open back to the public to uh, three minutes per person, no sharing of time, so we can um, try and get through this quickly. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. You opposed? You opposed? Okay. So open to public. Uh, who moved it? Uh, uh, I have a motion to open to public. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone uh, would like to come up and speak? Go ahead. Which way should we do it back? Lauren Eastwood, hmm. Four Wheeler Drive. First of all, I want to put it on the record that we have not been provided copies of the resolutions. Some of the titles were so vague that I don't know what they're about. And we have not been read the resolutions, and I reserve all rights. Okay. Um, and since you already have one open Public Meetings Act lawsuit against you, that's something that you should have considered. Uh, my OPRA request was made under Judge Farrington's ruling, and I expect to receive everything that Judge Farrington ruled was public. Uh, I do not believe you should be second-guessing a Superior Court judge. Um, I want to make it clear that I requested police overtime records only and did not do a study, and any representation that I made did a study is false. Um, I also want to know why, if you're so concerned about saving money that you want a part-time court clerk, why you aren't looking at whether we need a part-time or no DPW secretary, or are you just protecting that person because her husband's Mike Maranuzzi? I'd also like to know why George Rego isn't on the, re on the rice list after that newspaper article. Uh, it seems to me that he should have been riced and the borough should be attempting to fight. I agree with you. He should have been riced last time, but the mayor didn't want me to. Well, uh, you're the borough uh, attorney. Please, uh, you guys have control of the council. And um, as far as I'm concerned, you should have riced to Rego and you should be in the process. Mayor, you don't have the floor. Let Eastwood speak. Um, and you, you should be in the process of firing him. Um, and I, finally, I want to point out to you that the previous court clerk who worked before we had a red light camera and the traffic ticket volume of that was also full time. She received a $50,000 salary and another $50,000 a year in overtime. Of course, her husband was lending the Democrats a trolley to ride around for, in for their campaign, so that didn't seem to be a problem then. Anyone else? Anthony Nick out 54 Elm Street. Um, I would just like to thank the council for what they've done in the last two weeks to resolve all this litigation and to actually wind up saving the taxpayers of this town some money. Um, again, I'm disgusted by the fact that last year we spent close to $2 million in legal fees, and I'm glad that you... It's very immature, Mario. No. Yeah, he's hitting the dial tone. Um and I frankly expect better from our mayor going forward, and hopefully he's learned a lesson today. Thank you very much for being responsible elected officials. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else from the audience? Okay, Mayor. Uh, Mario Show, 12 Irving Avenue. I take offense at the fact that you're limiting public comment to three minutes after you were in private session and these, everybody waited to, for you to come out for, after over three hours. Okay? And at Aversa, you love to shorten the public's comment. But to, to have these resolutions, you all have copies of them. Why are not copies provided to the public? They are tight. That means they've been prepared in advance. And when I came in the, this evening, I saw Lizette go out and then come back and give um, attorney lunch a whole stack of papers 
that appeared to be resolutions. So the fact that you had had this at its pipe and you were denying access to the public and you were voting on it without giving us the content, without giving us what's involved, okay, I think you're in violation of the Open Public Meetings Act as far as giving us access to what you're voting on. Okay, we have no access to these resolutions. We should have a copy at hand to be able to read it and comment on it. We cannot comment on U.S. 2 colon 16 3 D force D6. What the hell is that? I don't even know. Okay? That's, I'm, I'm not able to di differentiate what that is. Okay? Because I don't have any of the papers. If I had the papers that I could refer to it and I had a copy of what you have, I could give reasonable comment. Okay? But this is unacceptable. And for uh, people that constantly harp on transparency, you are far, far from transparent. Okay, you are deceptive. You are totally deceptive, and I'm so, so disappointed that you are doing that, but I'm not surprised because I really didn't expect anything better from you. And the fact that I was on the committee for the police, I saw the grievances, I listened to the tapes, and any of those police officers, Regan, Murphy, and Henkelman, should have been disciplined, okay? They should have been disciplined, okay, for the comments on the tapes, okay? Besides the fact, um, the police chief was, a resolution was passed by the council to discipline the police chief for violating the order as per the judge. The judge had ordered 90 days for every day that he violated the order. And the, the council, the police committee, and then the council voted, and he was given two days for every day violated the order. Okay, that was passed, and he was supposed to have lost his um, accrued sick time for those many days, and I think it was 300 and some odd days or something like that. Okay, now we, when we, when we voted on it, we said what we were voting on. We, ha you had a copy of it. The public had a copy of it. Tonight we have zero, zero. Can I make time, a suggestion? Time, Mary. Thank um, you. Oh, thank you. To it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now I have I'm one sorry. other question. I'm Excuse sorry, me. No, well, you're sorry. Everybody I'm sorry. I would minutes. like to know. You're voting on minutes tonight from December, from October 10th. I would like to know if those minutes are the incorrect minutes that was that Tuffy Duffy prepared originally, or are they the correct minutes that were prepared by the borough attorney, Amory Rizzuto. Which set of minutes from October have, 10th? Okay, so I have two things for you, uh, I don't know Ms. O'Shea. Mayor, you out of order. Um, <coughs> number one, we we'll take a short recess and make copies of the resolution so you could have copies. And then we will be able number to copy. Two, number two, the minutes are the original minutes that were prepared the, by... The fake minutes. Real that's your the opinion. fake minutes. No, that's that was what the borough attorney. Please reach. Not entitled to the settlement agreement. Well, we have a right to know what it is. Come and get the defendant. You want to open a comment? Exactly. You're a named defendant. It's in litigation. You're not, you know. Named plaintiff. She's a plaintiff. Yeah. So I'd like to see it also. Yeah, it was a mistake. You're a plaintiff in the case. If you were a plaintiff in the case, if I'm mistaken, you're not suing Mike Chaffee? Oh, okay. I, I know what you're talking about. I mean, uh, anyone, uh, do I have a, a motion to come out of uh, recess? No recess? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Borough Attorney, do you want to start out with resolution number 19-57? Sure. Nineteen dash fifty seven resolution authorizing payment of council fees and costs in accordance with court's decision of December twenty one, twenty eighteen, whereas in order to show cause a verified complaint was filed on December five, twenty eighteen by the PBA local forty five against the borough of Anglo Cliffs under docket number B E R dash L dash eight seven three two dash eighteen. Whereas the matter was heard before the Honorable Christine A. Farrington, Justice Superior Court, on December 21, 2018, whereas Judge Farrington awarded attorney's fees and costs to counsel for PBA Local 45, that is Lockie Carrera Bukowski, Michael A. Bukowski appearing, 
whereas the council fees were certified to be fourteen thousand eight hundred dollars for the attorney's fee certification with 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 by Mr. Bukowski and the court, whereas Labor Council Ruderman and Roth LLC, Mark S. Ruderman appearing, negotiated with Mr. Bukowski for settlement of those awarded council fees and costs for a lesser sum, that is $10,000, which amount is agreed to by Mr. Bukowski on behalf of his client, CBA Local 45. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Angle Cliffs that the $10,000 council fee and cost is to be paid to Lockheed Carrera Bukowski in settlement of the awarded council fees and costs pursuant to Judge Farrell decision of December 21, 2018. Any discussion? No. No. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Um, All right. Please be so uh, uh, This is supposed to be uh, open to the public after we got the resolution. We're going to open to the public after we vote. After you vote? Yeah. All, in, no. all in favor? No. You vote. Yeah. Should be you after we vote. Before you vote. No. We, we got well, everything before your vote. We already you vote. That's, that's why you gave us the resolution, so we could read them. And then if we okay. needed to comment on okay. it. So who would like to come up? No, wait, you got it. Well, I was I advised you, from you the attorney that right. we, could, we could do it at the end. Then you vote. you got to open the there is, vote. There is a motion pending that has been seconded. We have to go to vote. You are in violation I, of the open public meetings. And, and you're in violation of speaking at a turn. Okay? So stop. Okay, so roll call. We're going to open to the public afterwards. Um, uh, just for the record, I think we need to have the public's comments so that we can ha form our opinion on the resolutions we're voting on. We have um, a motion pending and seconded. And then we'll take it's, the it's an improper the motion. I think it should be open to the public. We will open at the end. I don't think that's appropriate. I think I think we should open to the public now. But let's just take this vote because it's already on the table. Oh, yeah, you need to open to the public yeah. now. We sh we can open to the public right now. I mean, what's the issue? Let's just do it the right way. I mean, what's the big deal? Okay. Council questions who? We have a motion that has been seconded. The motion has to go to a vote, or someone who made the motion has to rescind it. You never closed it. You know what? We were still in public session. It wasn't closed. So the per whoever moved it, okay, make no a first step. Uh, okay. uh, I'll rescind the, the motion. Okay. You want to amend the motion? No, he wants no. to rescind. You want to rescind it? Okay. Um, so do I have a motion to? And then okay, the second have, one, and then want, Ellen. I was in my second. Okay. okay. So okay. now, public. Do I have a motion to open to the public? So moved. So any second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Same same rules apply. I second. Thank you, Teddy. Okay. So who would like to speak on all of any of these resolutions pending? Yeah, there you go. All of them. Three minutes each. Three minutes no, per order. person. But I mean, I need to we will not be interrupted. You will have your three minutes to speak. Are you and going to do them one at a time? Nope, we're doing them all now. So you can speak on any of the resolutions that are before you, okay. that you pick, have. Pick your favorite. You can pick whatever one you like. It's your turn to speak if you'd like okay. to again, right. even though you already spoke. That's all right, but I didn't have the resolutions there. Okay, that's what I say. We'll give you another shot. Okay. Uh, anyone anyone would want to be heard? I want to speak. Just okay. a second. I, I'm, I'm late. I'll be up there. Any, anyone else anyone in the meantime? Else? Anyone Someone else out? would we'll like to speak? be until 2 o'clock in the morning. Floor, you want to recognize me? Uh, Miss, Mrs. Valari, you? you could come up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Maria Valari, 45 Jane Drive. Um, I haven't really had 100% time to read all this. I think it's despicable of you to hand this to us a minute before before you allow people to come up. First of all, you tried not to even let us speak. You tried, you tried to censor our speech. And for people who ran on fairness and the town and the people and all the wonderful stuff that you talked about, I am really disgusted. Three minutes, really? I. 
uh, Debbie, you you were the first one out there screaming that you did, you you wanted all the time in the world to discuss what you wanted at length. It didn't matter how long we sat here, and now you turn the tables and you have all, you you really. I have to tell you, I, what you did at the reorg meeting was disgusting. What Can you're doing tonight is disgusting. I want to speak about uh, the resolutions. I think that you needed to really give us all this information ahead of time. I think that that to to drop everything against the chief goes against everything that's fair in this country that I thought was fair in this country and I wonder why you're rushing to do this at a special meeting where the mayor is not even present um, I think that I, I worry I worry that the reason why you are doing this and I would like to specifically ask each one individually have you had any favors from the chief As, uh, are people up there voting based on yeah. Oh, yes, Miss Park. He's smiling. My goodness. Oh, please. You know what? It would be nice if you didn't behave like a five-year-old up there and make all these faces. Say to me, it's disgusting to let go. Now I'm laughing at you guys. Please let us look at every video. You're a child. You are a child. You know that. And you need to mature. You're an attorney. Uh, I w I really would like to know if anybody on this day is here has had favors by the police department, for their family members, for themselves, for anything that's gone on in their lives. Because I know I've never received, I could sit here and tell you I've never received a favor by anybody in this town. So I wonder really why you're doing this. Is it for poli because they, they backed you politically? Is it because you've had some favors done because of whatever's gone on in your lives? And I am very upset at what's going on here and I'm very upset at how you are running these meetings not handing us these things when you've had them typed all along these aren't handwritten you didn't go in there and handwrite these these decisions these have been hand these have been typed written and you refuse to give them to the public you refuse to give them to us because you didn't want us to prepare for this and you should all kind thank you Ms. Uber. yeah you're welcome Mr. Reversa Anyone else in the audience? Go ahead, Mary. Mary O'Shea, 12 Irving Avenue. Um, resolution 59, rescinding the disciplinary charges against Brian Murphy, Captain Regan, Lieutenant Hinkleman for the contents of tape number 102, and 100 um, from De September 21st, um, 61B for Brian Murphy. Um, September 12th, 2018 for um, Captain Regan and Lieutenant Hinkleman. The comments that they were privy to and the fact that they did not report it is a violation of decency. It's stigmatized, even though those were the stigma people. All right, and I would want to know if an internal affairs investigation will be opened on these items now that the disciplinary charges from the council are being rescinded. Yes. Ms. O'Shea, um, it was my recommendation that the charges be dismissed for the exact reason that you just specified. There was not an internal investigation done prior to the proffering of charges last fall, which I knew nothing about personally until the grievances were filed. Once the grievances were filed, I became aware of the fact that no internal investigation had been done by the police department, and therefore the charges, regardless of the merit, we're not talking about the merit of the charges, would have been thrown out for not following the current general guidelines, which mandate an internal investigation. So by doing this, by voting on this resolution tonight, the council is approving the dismissal of the charges and authorizing an internal investigation of these three individuals for the exact conduct that you are talking about. And when is that going to be initiated? Tomorrow? It's my understanding it has already started. Okay. Because many of these gentlemen are on the, or were on the Internal Affairs com Committee. Well, no. So, I mean, I hope they're not investigating themselves. You're 100% correct. 
if we went to the prosecutor's office and we said people are definitely involved in criminal investigation, you're 100% correct, they recommended a different officer from this department conduct the internal investigation, not one of these three individuals, not attached to these three, but a member of the police department and a superior officer, so there is an independent investigation being done. All right, well, that is a little bit of consolation. And at the time the disciplinary charges were acted upon and confirmed, we knew nothing of anything with internal affairs because we would have no way of knowing if there was an internal affairs. As labor counsel, I did not know. And we didn't know either. These charges were proffered without seeking my advice. Okay, all right. And then the settlement with Michael Chiaffi says attached settlement agreement and dismissal of all actions by Chiaffi against the borough. Okay, when will that settlement agreement be given to the public? When it's signed by both parties. Right now it is not signed by both parties, but there is more than what is right in that document in terms of what the settlement was. The settlement, if I may, talk in somewhat specifics. Mr. Chiaffi will be pleading guilty to conduct unbecoming an officer and receiving a 90-day suspension. Obviously, since he's retiring effective February 1st, the suspension will be taken from available vacation or other personal time that he has on the books. And also, he is withdrawing all three of his lawsuits against the borough, withdrawing them with prejudice, and at the same time waiving any right to any attorney's fees that he has incurred through his counsel throughout the litigation of those three things, which we estimate is somewhere in the neighborhood of a quarter million dollars, which the borough will not be on the hook for. That's good. One question, though. Does that cover all the lawsuits that he has against the borough? Because he had many, many. You're right. I'm only aware of three. That's all I know of that we found. And does that include all the other named parties in the lawsuits? Because he named Councilman Park, Councilman Nunziato, Consalvo. He will be withdrawing it against all defendants. All defendants. Individuals or municipalities. Okay. All right. And I have one other. The litigation of the one with the PBA. When we had other issues with the PBA, Anne-Marie Rizzuto, who was the attorney for the borough, said that certain members of the council were conflicted, and she advised them not to vote on different matters, like these lawsuits for the PBA, because the PBA had campaigned for them and had handed out flyers by the policemen to all the homeowners. So I want to know if any of the council people up there, and that includes all five of them, are conflicted from voting on this PBA resolution. That one I have to defer to the borough attorney. He's a little bit slanted in his opinions. Regardless of how much you feel of him, he is the borough attorney, and he is giving advice to this council. Okay. Well, they were advised that they were conflicted. Okay. So I would hope that they will consider that as they go forward. Okay. Because one of the things in the PBA resolution is that it says they want to develop a harmonious relationship with the PBA. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mary. So, you know, a harmonious relationship. I think they personally have had a very harmonious relationship. Thank you, Mary. I gave you a lot of time, but thank you. Okay. All right. But... Lauren Eastwood, 4 Willow Drive. Resolution number 59 rescinds 
the uh, disciplinary charges against three officers, including Captain Brian Murphy. I did not see Mr. Wunsch leave the caucus room. Mr. Wunsch, I, I did, actually. You didn't come in here, and I, I didn't saw have him. to come in here. There's, there's another door. There's another hallway over there. Into the police station where you shouldn't be. Um, it's a hallway. There's a bathroom there too. Um, Captain Murphy <coughs> represented Captain Murphy until um, he, until about five minutes before he became borough attorney. Um, there is. There was no evidence that you left that caucus room. You didn't come out here, and it appears you stayed in while your client's legal matters were discussed. Thank you. Anyone else? Carol McMorrow, uh, 49 Summit Street. I'm going to tell you up front, if you hold me to three minutes, I'm going to interpret that as a violation of my First Amendment's rights of freedom of speech. It's outrageous to try and handcuff this public to talk about seven resolutions. I, can't, I couldn't even read through them all. So I'm just going to comment on two of them because I, I couldn't get through more than that. Um, I'll talk as quickly as I can. Um, Al, you have a conflict, a serious conflict. I downloaded only two letters from you on pay, on uh, civil case access room. I'm really, for, for me to say this, I, I don't need the commentary. Don't make me waste my time. One's dated October 3rd, 2018, where you write to Judge Frischer saying that you represent Brian Murphy. The second one is where you were a witness in the federal case for Chaffee, and you were trying to, you, your lawyer, uh, or whatever it is that works out of your office, Mr. Krause, tried to file the motion to quash the subpoena you had issued, and you again reference your representation of Mr. Uh, Brian Murphy on disciplinary matters. It's Captain. Okay, Murphy. Captain, excuse me. I'm going to call Mr. Brian Murphy after what I heard him say on the tape. He doesn't act like a captain, in my opinion. That's number one. Number two, you were in bad faith negotiating on behalf of this borough, in my opinion, to act on negotiating PBA when he's a member of the PBA? Are you kidding me? Do you understand what kind of conflicts that is? No. And you know what, Mark? I'm going to tell you, I had a little more respect for you. But everybody is saying the conflicts that this man has and what he's doing with this borough in negotiating and... I thought as a lawyer you would respect conflicts and want to be doing the right thing as well. I'm disappointed in both of you. Besides what I heard you say on the tape, Mark. Uh, this is my statement on the choppy tapes. Clearly this was a pre-done deal. As a named defendant in the federal lawsuit, the um, lawyer for the chief of police wrote to the defense counsel, mine, and uh, said the matter was, was resolved, not go working on being resolved, resolved in the email. Then there, then there was an email from Mr. Carmignola that stated, no one contacted me at all. I know nothing about this. So the police committee, which overstepped their rights, if you read the bylaws, they don't have the right to go and negotiate and work on behalf of an entire council that's outside of the realm of what their responsibility is allowed to be done. I'm just putting everything on the record. Uh, I, I saw on the agenda that it indicates resolutions on pending cases, some involving Chief Chaffee. I understand sometimes a council has to make a determination if setting a case is in the borough's best interest for a variety of reasons. However, it is my opinion that this would be premature in this instance. It was my life that he threatened, not any one of yours. It was my life that he threatened, okay? And shame on you that none of you are able to do the right thing. Time. Thank you. No, Tom. that's not, my time is not up. Oh, yeah, it is, actually. No, it's three, not up. Minutes, my time is not, not up. Right. No. It's, it's, Please do respect it's it's that is, and and that is, no, I waited three and a half hours. You had no resolutions. I'm a name defendant in that case. I'm the victim of what Chief Chucky did, and I'm going to read my statement. It's bad enough what you're doing. Okay, I'm the victim here. My life will never be the same after what that man has done to me and my family. I'm going to read my statement. 
How much time do you think you need? Do not question me. Um, I owe you nothing. Then you don't get any more time. I'm going to read my statement. Everybody gets the same amount of time. You should not be handling I'm, I'm, no, I'm not Please. being discriminatory to anybody. You had your time. I'm a I, we have a right to comment That's before you like vote. To give it a time to we have a you. right to comment before you vote on these important matters before this council, before this town. I just have, I just, this is my, this is my statement from here to here to ask. You're not going to allow me to read well, my yeah, statement on nine okay. resolutions? Okay. Cal, can you just make it quick? It's midnight. We'd like to get the meeting That's through. not our fault that okay. it's midnight. Okay. You put nine things in the time. Thank go. you. Okay. You said before that you read, uh, that you listened to the tapes. Did you listen to all the tapes or only the specific pieces of the tape that had to do with the disciplinary hearings? I'm just curious as the person that's on these I, tapes. I don't think this is really going back. I, okay. Well, you're voting, so my, then I'll make it as a statement. I'll make it as a statement. You are voting on something very important here. There are 120 audio tapes. Those tapes encompass many different subject matters that are not involved in those disciplinary hearings because no one has been allowed to listen to those tapes yet. There is allegations of overtime fraud. There are allegations of police officers, of the chief allowing police officers to carry weapons that they are not certified to carry. This public has a right to know what this chief did. They have a right to know. And I'm asking all of you, before you voted, that you listened to, and you you will be questioned on that at some point, because I'm sure you'll be. Is it a statement? Yes. You, oh. It is a statement. Okay? You said you were going to. There read. are. There are. Other things on these tapes, not just the snippets, as Miss Park referenced there. Okay, but and there are, for me. it doesn't right. matter. But Mr. Mr. Wunsch has. Please. Let me make my statement. Mr. Wunsch stated that he had those audio tapes for at least two weeks, and given that there is a settlement in front of you, I hope that each and every one of you listens to all 120 audio tapes and all of the egregious behavior that was spoken about, not just a little bit that's been in the newspapers, because there's a lot more. I hope that you've taken the time and due consideration that there are also internal affairs, other internal affairs, other internal affairs that came out of the disciplinary hearings, Mr. Rudiman. And by the way, they didn't need to rescind those disciplinary charges to start the, the uh, internal affairs. You know that. You're a labor lawyer. Read the AG guidelines. They should have started those internal affairs immediately. The as soon as they come do not, do not, okay, don't. As soon as a police officer hears, as soon as a police officer hears any Sorry. act of possible wrongdoing by another police officer, an internal affairs is supposed to be started. Police officers know what they're supposed to do. Besides those, there are other internal affairs pending, pending outside of the ones that came out of the disciplinary hearing. There are other internal affairs pending regarding uh, Chief Choppy. Please read. I am. That involved Chief Choppy, and an investigation has not yet been concluded. There is also a sexual harassment complaint that has been filed with the borough. Before the council entertains these resolutions, these considerations are important because the citizens of our borough have the right to expect that our law enforcement complies with the law and the standards set forth for law enforcement and for law enforcement to deal with the consequences if they do not comply with the law. As citizens ourselves, we are expected to abide by the law and we would expect that they would apply to law enforcement as well. I think what all you guys did here is disgusting. I don't know how you're going to sleep at all. Shame on each and every one of you that is going to vote to do what you did and what you did to this public. Shame on you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Hearing and seeing none, do I have a motion to close so the public? Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so let's go to the first item of the resolutions. Resolution 19-57. Resolution authorizing payment of council fees and costs in accordance with the court's decision of December 21, 2018. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Roll call. 
Okay. Wool? Yes. Song? Yes. Savari? Yes. Harp? Yes. Aversa? Yes. Oh. Yes. The next item of the resolutions, resolution number 19-59, resolution rescinding disciplinary charges. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Roll call. Council persons will. I'm going to vote based on what the borough attorney, uh, the labor attorney said in the IA. When, when, is the, uh, when did the IA start? It started, it started um, probably in October. Do you have an exact date? No, no, it's not. not it's still ongoing. I explained to you, IA is a private process. That's why I don't know why Ms. McMorrow yeah, knows about right. IAs that exist. An IA is a private process. It's my understanding that the process started in October, but had not been cooperative with regards to getting them police the tapes or getting witnesses to come in and testify. Namely, the excuse me, the alleged complainant. <coughs> um, so it's been going on. I can say now that the tapes were provided to them, and so the process will continue. Uh, it's my opinion. I still think an independent hearing officer would be better. Uh, in better position to handle this, so I'm going to say no. Stone? Yes. Savari? Yes. Park? Park? I said yes. Yes. Aversa? Yes. O? Yes. Next resolution, resolution number 19-56, resolution approving a settlement in the matter of Borough of Vanglewood Cliff and uh, Chief of Police Michael Shafi. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Roll call. Council persons will. I just want to make a quick comment for the record. Um, I received this settlement document uh, about a few hours ago, it's an 11-page settlement document with um, financial terms on the settlement. Um, given what the chief has done uh, to this town with all the lawsuits, I'm not I, I'm not comfortable giving any reward to the chief. Um, the tapes that he recorded, um, etc. I'm not going to you know comment too long, but I'm I'm going to vote no. Some? Yes. Savari? Yes. Park? I just also want to say that this, we're trying to do what's best for the town. And, you know, you could smile, Mary, but honestly, you could ask anyone about me in town. I am an honest person. And it's my, I believe this is in the best interest. And I don't condone anything that he said on those tapes, to be clear. But, I, yes. That's laughable, Ellen. Aversa? Yes. Oh? Yes. Um, last item before Mr. Ruderman gets to go home <laughs> um, is um, there is an addendum to settlement and uh, general lease uh, related to Scamira versus Bora of Bangalore Cliff. Or actually, I, I take that back. It's Scamira versus Boro Chaffee. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? This is a motion. It's not in a resolution. It's not a resolution. Second. Roll call. Who seconded it? I did. Uh, Ellen. Okay. Council persons Wu? Yes. Song? Yes. Sabari? Yes. Park? Yes. Aversa? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, I think that's it for you, Mr. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Okay. 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 Now we're going to go in order. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. Resolution number 19-55, approving a settlement in the matter of Borough of Anglewood Cliffs versus Boswell Engineering Company. Do I have a motion? So moved. 
Second? Second. Roll call. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Aversely surprised. Council persons Wu. Take care. Again, um, I only received this settlement agreement literally in my email right before we started. Um, I only know the financial terms represented by the borough attorney. Um, I have not had a chance to read it. I tried to read it quickly, Al. Uh, as you know, you just sent it to me. So I'm going to vote no. So? I think it's a great settlement, Al. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Savari? I agree. It's going on way too long. Great settlement. Thank you. Park? Yes. Aversa? Yes. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Resolution number 19-58, approval of settlement agreement with the Anglewood Cliffs PDA Local 45. So moved. 58. Yes, resolution number 58. Motion by uh, Councilman Aversa. Any? Uh, do I have a second? Aversa. Roll call. Aversa. Okay. Council persons Wu. No. Song. Yes. Sabari. Yes. Park. Yes. Aversa. Yes. Oh. Yes. Resolution number 19-60, resolution creating a new ad, new ad hoc committee regarding affordable housing litigation. Uh, this resolution is... Re oh, it's okay. Okay, so do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. I'm sorry. Resolution creating a new... Subcommittee. Subcommittee. Right. Right, but what, why does it have this? It's because you're reading the board. Oh, I'm reading the board. Yes, okay. All right, resolution uh, 19-60, resolution creating a new subcommittee regarding affordable housing litigation. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Roll call. Council persons Wu. Um, is this resolution amended at all, or can you read it? To the public? Do you want me to read it? Yeah. yeah. You, you, hold on. Let me read it. Okay. Whereas um, a subcommittee was formed to review affordable housing issues with the borough, and whereas all previous ad hoc committees were terminated at the reorganization meeting on January 3rd, 2019, whereas the previous ad hoc committee never met, and the individuals previously on the ad hoc committee now hold different positions within the borough, and whereas our planning board chair will be invited to meetings. Now, therefore, be it resolved, a new subcommittee is hereby formed. Be it further resolved that the following people shall be appointed to said committee, Ellen Park, Ed Aversa, Debbie Sabar. I know. I'm going to do that. Uh, Council Persons no. vote? Yes. Song? Yes. Sabari? Yes. Park? I just want to say that we actually invited Bill to be on the committee and he refused or he declined, I, I want to say. So just. What are you talking well, about? You had a order. Yeah, okay. No, I didn't. I you. Please follow the rules. But, yes. Park? Yes. Aversa? Yes. Oh? Yes. Okay, so I think we're all done with the. No, that's the resolution, so can you want to do it that? Okay. All right, so um, moving right along, we have resolution number 19 51. Uh, do I have a motion? So, so move. Second. Second. Roll call. Uh, that was Park. Was that Wu? Yes. Yes. Council persons Wu? Yes. Sung? Yes. Sabari? Yes. Park? Yes. Aversa? Yes. O? Yes. 52? Resolution number 19-52, resolution of intent to bond or budget for any funding shortfall. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Roll call? Cancel persons Wu? Yes. Sung? Yes. Sabari? Yes. Park? Yes. Aversa? Yes. 
Oh, yes. Uh, next item, we have minutes from October 10. The regular minute, uh, regular minute, uh, regular meeting minutes uh, from October 10, 2018. Um, also, caucus and regular uh, are you minutes, that's or is it December 12, 2018. And uh, lastly, the special meeting from December 31, 2018. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Are, are you approving the fake minutes, Second. Gloria, or do we open it? Roll call. Marcia, you second it? Park? Yes. yes. Council persons, Wu? No on the minutes of October 10. Yes to the other ones. Song? Abstain. Sabari? Abstain on October 10th. And here is the December 12th. No, you're not saying it for those either. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Park? Yes. <laughs> so many meetings. Aversa? Yes. Oh, yes to all. Did you want to talk about the, uh, the, the angle of question? Oh, that's actually. Yeah. Yeah. Can oh. I bring that up? Sure. Yeah. So, found out, Mary, you might know this, but um, Angle Chris is going to undergo their 125th anniversary, and I think we should uh, look into forming a little committee to do something nice and be kind of a feel-good kind of thing for our town, so I thought it would be nice, um, and I'd like you to be a part of that. Sure. You know, we'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, Laura, can we bring it up at the next council meeting? Bring it up the next council. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. I just also want to say something. Um, is yes. it on the agenda? Because we have to limit oh. to what's on the agenda. Yeah. No, no. It's well. Can we just do it in old business or new business? No, we don't have no. old business. So. Not, just not, a not warning during, to the residents. No. Is that not okay? during special meetings. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, anyone else? Do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye